Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today we're, uh, well we're down on the floor and we're down on the floor because I thought we'd have a look at uh, this thing here now this is a Zenith Data Systems 286 PC from probably about 1988, something around there now I picked this thing up sometime in the late 90s I think um, and I'm, pro I'm pretty sure it probably hasn't been powered on since then. Probably not been powered on since about 1998. Um, it's been stored in storage since then. And um, I was clearing out today and I uh, come across it. And it's quite complete. I've actually, um, unfortunately I don't think I've got the discs. But I have actually got the original Zenith Data Systems uh, MS-DOS version 3 I think for it. It's got its original um, Zenith Data Systems keyboard. The monitor, unfortunately, isn't the original Zenith monitor. I'm not sure what happened to that. I don't actually know whether um, I got it or whether it came with the monitor you see on it now. Um, I found that in one of my other stores. I just uh, unearthed the um, base unit and the keyboard today. But seeing it's not been fired up for such a long time, I thought we'd um, have a look, quick look over it. So you don't see these old 286 systems um, very often now. So what I thought we'd do, this isn't going to be a long video. I think it's just going to be a quick little um, precursor to something um, something that will come up, depending on what we find here and now. Um, so what I think we will do is we will um, open her up and we'll have a quick look inside it. Um, see what we've got to play with. Uh, then we'll connect it all up and um, we'll give it some juice and see what it actually does after all these years. That is being that the um, CMOS battery hasn't leaked in there and destroyed the motherboard or uh, one of the other countless things that happens to these computers when they sit unused and unloved for decades. But anyway, without further ado, I'll uh, get the monitor shifted, I'll get the screws out of it and we'll um, have a look inside it. So, if you just excuse me for a minute. Just another thing, look at the length of this, look at the length of the cable on this keyboard. I mean you don't get ca keyboard cables like this anymore. And the weight of this keyboard, it weighs an absolute ton. It's a, I mean you could do some, yeah the, the back of it's actually metal. You could, I mean you could do someone some serious injury with that if you used to uh, batter them around the head with it. It is horrendously yellowed but uh, hopefully that won't affect its operation. power cable out of the way. This monitor is nothing special, it's just your generic um, mono, probably green screen. I'm guessing it's a green screen. But it's just your average uh, mono monitor with the standard uh, nine pin plug like that. That is, I'm, I'm presuming this has got a mono card in it. It could have a, I mean, conceivably it could have an EGA card in it. It could have a CGA card in it because they're all um, the nine pin connector. But I have a feeling that this I got this from a business somewhere. I can't 100% remember actually how I come across this computer. Um, it was probably a business throwing it out somewhere. Uh, I don't think it's been used as a games computer or anything like that. So it probably was just simple basic mono graphics. It was probably just running spreadsheet database and some word processor, that type of thing. We've got two five and a quarter inch floppy drives, this being an AT, I'm guessing they're probably a 1.2 megabyte. Um, they may be 360k but I doubt it, they probably are 1.2 megabyte ones then. So let's uh, spin it round. Now it has only got a few screws in it at the moment so uh, this is how I found it, I must have just stuck a couple of screws in it to keep the case on. So let's get them screws out. Oops, try not to lose them. And let's uh, have a look inside this wee beastie. Lots of plenty of nice lovely dust. Let's get the case off there. And this thing is a monster, it really is weight wise. It's, uh, it's very, very heavy. Anyway, let's get you over there so you can have a proper look inside it. And the nice thing is, um, there's a CMOS battery down there, in a holder, and it doesn't look like it has leaked, so uh, I'll leave that in there for now, just in case of the hope that it is actually still holding some, uh, some uh, 
charge in there and hold in the CMOS. I very much doubt that, but uh, it's not leaked, so that's one good thing. So you don't, you can't really appreciate just from the picture the actual how substantial this thing is. It really does weigh an absolute ton. I mean, the power supply on it's huge. Actually, the power supply isn't that big. This just seems to be a cover there. No, the power supply is only only about that big. Hmm. Anyway, we've got our two uh, five and a quarter inch floppy drives there. We have our, I think that must be our graphics um, card there. Now we have our hard disk controller card here. We have, what else have we got in this thing? Ah, now this, the motherboard is actually on one of these cards. That's just basically a riser at the bottom there. So one of these two is our motherboard. Let me turn the computer around so I can see better. Ah, yeah, right. So can you see this here? I don't really want to take these cards out just yet until I've actually tried firing this thing up. But yeah, we've got a hard drive card here. So we've got our floppy drive cable coming off it, going to the two floppy drives there. And then we've got the two cables there, which means that this is either going to be RLL, MFM or SD. Some, one of the um, older interfaces like that, because it's got the two uh, cables. I was wondering whether it may have been scuzzy this thing, but no, it's um, got the two... I think one's, um, one controls the um, step, step of the heads and the other one's the data line. I think that's how they work in these things. Yeah, because that can go to two hard drives to step the heads. And then I think that that and then the second one there are the two data lines. Because so, you have two hard drives on one of these cards. I did do that many, many, many years ago. But um, something I suppose we could play with. It has a massive... When I say massive, I don't actually know what its capacity is, but what we've got down there, let me lift it up so you can see, in there, is we have a double height, five and a quarter inch hard disk drive. Now, the computer seems to be all right. I think what we've got here is we may have um, a processor card there, and then, judging by all this here, I think that might be an ex a RAM expansion card or something like that. Um, either that or the computer system is split over two cards. But no, I think that goes to the front of the case. I think that's probably the um, processor card there. And then that there is, um, is probably a ex RAM expansion card. But we'll, like I said, we'll see about that when we uh, get this thing fired up. And then, as I said, yeah, that's the, um, I presume that's the graphics card there. It looks very much like, yes, it is. It's got a nine pin on it. So we've got our um, graphics output card there. So I'll stick the case back on this. We'll um, connect a keyboard and a um, monitor up to it. And I think we'll see what it actually does. So it could go pop. There is the um, possibility that it could... Uh, it could admit, admit smoke, it could uh, go bang in. And that was uh, lying around in the case, but I don't know where that's come from. Like I said, it could go pop on us, it could fizzle and crack, but uh, that's all part of the fun with messing with these old computers, isn't it? So let's get the case back on like that. Let's, uh, I'll shove it back and zoom you back up like that. Now let's get the monitor. It's all filthy dirty as well, so uh, it will need a really good clean. And to be honest, I'd love to get this set up if it's uh, viable. But my biggest problem is where on earth I'm going to. Oh dear. I'll need another IEC lead for the uh, monitor, I think. I was hoping it had a pass through on the back of this, but it doesn't. We can connect up the. Uh, Get the monitor up to its output, like that, and we'll connect the keyboard up, Ooh. there's the keyboard, look that's it, like that, We've got some power for the computer,
Yeah, we've got some power for the computer in there. Right, let's push that back. There we go. We'll stick them the keyboard there. So you can all see that. Right. Now let's get that plugged in. Rather tricky working on my um, floor down there in my computer room because I haven't got a lot of space. I have enough space on my uh, tables but they're not big enough to actually accommodate something of this size. So let's switch that on. Oh! We weren't expecting it to power, power straight up like that. Let me uh, hurry up and see if I can get a monitor for it. Uh, I'm sure I left it. I made sure it was switched off on the back, but let's see what happens. Excuse me coming in front of the shop. Oh, look at that! I don't know whether you can see that there. Let me just uh, bring you in. Unfortunately, I have no real zoom on this camera, so let's see if I just drop you down a bit. See if you can get this uh, this on screen. But as you can see, as I was right, um, please replace the backup battery. Back configuration in CMOS. Errors found. Please press Escape to continue. So let's try and press Escape. I'm actually amazed that's fired up like it has. Error incorrect video configuration. Please run setup. Please escape to continue. Oh. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? It's actually got a. Um, it appears to actually have a BIOS. We've got um, one floppy drive actually set up. Base memory, uh, 512k, so it seems to have half a meg of RAM. Um. Right, boot drive is floppy. Then Winchester. Enter MFM. Right, so we'll have to um, pull this apart and find out what the hard drive is to be able to get this thing to boot, I think. Um, for now, just to see if it'll do anything, I think I've got a... Um, somewhere around here, I think I've got a DOS boot disk we could try in it, yeah. Let's see what we've got here. We've got MS DOS. Yeah, we've got MS DOS disk here. Right, let's try this. Right, let's just escape from that. Are you done checking changes? Yes. And let's see if this thing is going to boot. So, I was right, I think we do have a, a green screen monitor. Not happy. Right, so that was wrong. It must be this. Must be the uh, primary drive. Let's try that again. Let's we'll see what happens. Escape. So it's obviously it's not happy about that battery being. that going to load? Invalid address mark. Perhaps that disk's bad. Let's see if I've got anything else we can try on it. Have we got any other boot disks? Ah, oh, we've got one here. Yeah, let's try this one. Oh, I don't know. No, this one might be bad. Oh no. Let's give it a try. Well, it doesn't seem to be wanting to boot at the moment from the look of it. Let's give it one last re um, control out delete and see if that'll do anything. Interesting screen, by the way. It looks almost white, the text, but when it fades away, it actually does have a green phosphor to it. So, uh, it really is quite interesting that. 
this boot failure. Let's see if I've got one more we can try in there, but it's not looking good. Perhaps we need to um, clean the uh, disk drives in this thing. Like I said, it's not been fired up for many, many, many years. Ah, here we go. Let's see what we've got here. These are just all my uh, old five and a quarter inch discs. I've not even dug anything out proper for this. I just grabbed a, uh, a selection of five and a quarter inch um, discs like this when I found the thing and thought, well, uh, we'll see if there's something in here that can boot it. If, uh, if not, well, it's not looking uh, oh, is that any good. No, I've got lots of gem discs in here from the old um, Amstrad systems. No, it's not looking like we've got anything we can uh, we can boot it with. That's a shame. Oh, well, let's give this one a try. I've got one last one last try. Let's just make sure it isn't this as the boot drive. I hope it's not those. Let's, let's have a look. Oops. Let's bang you like that. Control out. Delete. I seem to have uh, gone into basic there. Oh, MFM 200 monitor. Oh. Right, I won't mess about with that at the moment. I don't know how I actually got in there. That's the um, monitor for setting up the hard drive. I need to do some research on that so I can actually get that hard drive to uh... Let's try that disc in this drive again. Like I'm not holding out that much hope now. Is that trying to read? It's doing something but I'm not 100% sure what. No, it's obviously it's not trying to boot so I think we're going to uh... We'll leave it at that, to be honest. Let me switch this thing off now. So yeah, that's first power up for phew, over 10 years, I think, of a uh, Zenith Data Systems uh, 286. So I think I'll do another uh, video on this um, where we see if we can get it up and running. Um, I'll have to scour the internet, I think, for some um, hard drive setup information for it, because I'm not 100% sure how to use that um, setup system um, on the hard drive for this. Oh, we, shove, we could always shove an ID hard drive in it, but it would be nice to uh, see if we can get that old hard drive up and running, find out what it is, whether it's um, MFM or RLL or SD or whatever interface it's using, and um, have a look at these floppy drives down there because they're obviously um, they're obviously malfunctioning. Like I said, they're not uh, not loading anything, so we'll have a look at them. And uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do with this um, old 286 PC and uh, do some benchmarks on it and things like that. Perhaps run some old games and some older uh, software on it. I do have a. Um, CGA colour monitor kicking about somewhere which we can have a look see if we can get the uh, I think the card may be um, a mono CGA um, switchable card so we can perhaps have a look what this thing looks like with um, CGA graphics on it so uh, yeah I think I'm going to leave it at that for now so uh, thanks for watching that and uh, goodbye <laughs>